art friends, it's Miss Rose from the Cary Area Library again with another fun art project for you to do at home. Um, hey, it's um, going to be Earth Day, April 22nd, so I thought it would be fun to paint a landscape picture celebrating Earth. We're also going to talk about an artist named Robin Mead who does colorful landscapes. So we're going to be using watercolors today, which is fun. We're going to be drawing flowers, water, hills, trees, mountains, suns, all things on earth. So cool. Let's get started. The supplies you will need are a pencil, um, a black Sharpie marker. If you don't have a black Sharpie marker, you can use a black crayon a tray of watercolors, a paintbrush, um, 9 by 12 watercolor paper, and a container of water. Let's talk a little bit about the artist that influenced me to have you guys paint this landscape picture. Her name is Robin Mead and she paints colorful nature landscapes using watercolors and black lines. You'll notice that she uses designs in parts of her artwork and also um, she uses black lines. She outlines everything in black, but you'll notice some of the lines are thicker in some areas along with the patterns. All right, let's begin by drawing our landscape. Um, we're gonna be using our paper in the vertical position. Some people call that the doorway, doorway position rather than horizontally. So get your paper vertically and we're gonna start by drawing our flowers in the foreground, which is gonna be down here at the bottom of the paper. So since it's in the foreground, it's larger than what's in the background. So I'm gonna draw my flowers pretty large and I'm gonna have some of them go off my page. I'm gonna draw another one with different shaped petals. I'm trying to make them different sizes and different shapes so it makes the picture more interesting. That one looks a little funky, but that's all right. We're gonna have this one go off the corner and maybe we'll make these petals a little bit larger. Okay, the artist Robin Mead also added designs to her picture. So I'm just going to put some designs in my flowers or patterns. Just really simple ones. Now we're gonna work on our middle ground, which is what is in the middle of your picture when you're drawing. We have our foreground, which is larger because they're up close. Then we work on the middle ground, which is a little bit smaller than the flowers. We're gonna be putting some water and hills in this picture. Um, so another good reason why we did it in the vertical position, because we got lots to draw. We're gonna do flowers, we're gonna do water, hills, trees, mountains, and the sun. So let's see if I can draw some waves for the water. These are just like curls that you add to. So they kind of look like they're moving waves. Okay, and then in between, I'm just going to do some wave lines. So that's our water. Now we're going to move on to the hills. And these are soft rolling hills, so they're not, it's not a pointed line. It's oh, kind of another wave. 
like we did for the water, but these are our hills. So that's our middle ground. All right, the last section of your picture, we're gonna be working on the background. So we have our foreground, which is larger, the middle ground kind of in the middle size, and then our background is smaller because it's farther away from you in the picture. So we're gonna draw some trees because that's part of our earth. Um, so I'm just gonna draw some tree trunks, and then I'm gonna add the leaves kind of in a stylized fashion. So these are very simple trees. If you want to make yours more ornate, that's up to you. Okay, trees are done, so we're gonna move on to the mountains, which are different than the hills. They're a little more pointier and taller. I like to make them different sizes so it makes the picture more interesting. Okay, and then we're gonna finish by filling in the rest of the paper with the sun. So you can either draw a circle and have your rays come out. I'm gonna have it look like it's a sunrise or a sunset. So I'm just gonna draw half of the sun and do the rays out. And I'm drawing my rays all the way off of the paper because it's taking up the rest of the spot in my background. All right, our picture's done. We have our foreground, which is our flowers. We have our middle ground, which is our hills and our waves of water. We have trees, mountains, and the sun in our background. So once your picture is finished the way you'd like it to be, you're gonna take your black Sharpie marker, or if you don't have that, a black crayon works just fine, and you're gonna start tracing over all your lines um, slowly and carefully. I like to start at the bottom and just work my way up. And if there's something you drew on your paper that you don't want to have in your picture, just don't outline it in black and you can erase it later. Okay, so if you want to pause this recording and meet me back later after you've finished all your black lines, we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, did you finish all your black lines? Because I certainly did. Takes a while and it's hard to be exactly on the pencil line. So remember, you can take an eraser and erase all your leftover pencil lines when you're done. Um, so that works. I'm just gonna add some more patterns because the artist we were talking about, Robin Mead, use patterns in some of her artwork. So I'm just gonna add some more patterns in my sun in the rays, just simple patterns. We don't want it to be too busy. Um, let's see what we'll do. And maybe we'll do some. And 
let's see we got another I'm gonna add another ray here and do some dots dots are always fun they're a good pattern easy to do all right now we're gonna start painting so you have your water to rinse off your paintbrush when you change colors and we have our tray of watercolor paints. I'm gonna start by working on the sun. And um, there's a technique called wet on wet where you wet the paper first. Now this is important why we used um, a Sharpie marker. So it's a permanent marker so when it gets wet it does not bleed. And also if you use black crayon, same thing, it will not bleed. All right, so you wet your paper first. If you're doing the wet on wet, then get your paint wet. And it kind of just bleeds a little bit. It's easier to do. And maybe I want to do some blending, so maybe I want to add some red. So the colors kind of blend together. You can certainly just paint using water. I'd have to add a lot of water to get your paint started. That yellow's not very dark, so I hope you can see it. Right, and I'm using basically using warm colors on my sun because it's warm. So we want to do the orange, yellows, and reds. I have a paper towel underneath my artwork just so I don't mess up my table. And I have paper towel under my water bowl. So I'm just gonna do that wet on wet again where I wet the paper first. Add my color. Rinse off my paintbrush and add some orange. All kind of bleed together. You'll notice that some of my orange is going into the yellow because it's wet, and that's fine too. Maybe I just want to add some more along the edge. You can also add just water to kind of make things bleed a little more. All right, so I started my sun. I'm gonna move on down to my waves just because um, that might be a good place for the wet on wet. So I'm gonna get that part wet. And the waves I'm gonna do in the cool colors, blue, greens, and purples. I'm gonna add some purple to that to make it a little more interesting. Add some green. I think I'm gonna add some blue to the green. Ooh, look at what happened. See, it's wet. And that looks pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and wet this part. Add some more blue. Kind of a neat effect. Rinse off my paintbrush. Throw some purple in there. Okay, so you can kind of experiment with that. 
All right, so you're going to continue painting. Remember in the water we use the blue, green, and purple for cool colors. The sun is warm colors, so red, yellow, and oranges. The mountains can be purple and cool colors. Remember, I didn't mention this before, but when you're changing colors, make sure to rinse off your paintbrush so you don't mix your colors on your paint tray. All right, I brought in my finish sample to show you because I'm going to continue painting just like you were. Um, I wanted to show you that I did two different suns. I did the sun rising or set, and then I did the circle with the sun in the sky. Um, you can see that I did the wet on wet here. It gives kind of a neat effect in the water. I basically stuck with warm colors, the orange, reds, and yellows for the sun for warmth. And then I did the mountains in purple and kept the hills and the trees in green. So step, stayed with cool colors in the middle um, section. Flowers, you can do anything you want. I stuck with the warm. Um, so we have our foreground, our middle ground, and background. So I hope you guys had fun painting with watercolors. Um, and thanks for joining me. And do something fun for the earth today for Earth Day. See you next time.